Thank you, Luke. So uh, we are going to talk today about uh, integrating new 4 j with RAG, uh, specifically with the matching of jobs. So quickly about me, uh, yeah, I am an innovation project manager and a deep learning research at our Center of Excellence in Artificial Intelligence. Uh, I am also a PhD uh, candidate finishing uh, my PhD, a professor at UFG, our local university, and also an independent contractor at the X team. So the agenda for today, I will first talk a little about job matching and the challenges we have in this field. Uh, then we will go through the knowledge graphs and U4J. After that, I will talk a little about RAG. And we have two RAG strategies I want to talk about. Uh, and also a way to combine them. And by the end of this, this talk, we will talk about presentation uh, challenges and future directions. So uh, to talk a little about job batching, um, currently, uh, we have some issues with the job matching systems, uh, mainly related to the scalability and limited relevance, uh, mainly when we are talking about uh, unstructured data, like a resume or something like that. So we are not being able to get all the data we have in a resume to get a good representation of a, a candidate to match a job. Uh, and when we get the opportunities we have uh, with uh, knowledge graphs, we improve for sure uh, the way we represent data because uh, knowledge graphs has a flexible schema and also a really semantic way to represent the data. By introducing RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, with the knowledge graphs, we also can leverage in the all the features we have in LLMs and even talking to the data directly using natural language. So the idea of generating queries like Cypher commands uh, using LLMs is also a really good approach. And uh, we will talk a little about that today. So uh, talking a little more about knowledge graphs, uh, a knowledge graph is a graph that has properties in all the nodes and relationships. So we can use a property graph to represent a knowledge graph. And U4J is exactly the technology we need when we are talking about property graphs. So it has flexible schema. It has a really good language, which is Cypher, uh, and also uh, handles really complex uh, relationships with fast uh, querying. And no, other than that, we have a really good documentation and you know it is well supported by the community. And I would say the most used uh, craft database. So what is HAG and how it does work? Actually, uh, HAG is a way to improve the context of a uh, prompt uh, sent to an LLM. So this diagram is a really famous one to represent the, the entire process of RAG. So I will go through it really fast. We have the first input, the query, the, the, the message from the user. And instead of just going straight forward and send it to the LLM, the idea is to uh, vectorize, to generate some vector representations of documents and use these vector representations to do a vector search to get the most similar documents to the, the query we have, to, to the question we have. So uh, well, after doing that, instead of just uh, you know sending the query to the LLM, what we do is to add the context, add some representations of these documents we just find, and put them in the prompt to be sent to the LLM. And in this way, we, we are able to improve 
the answers we have from the LLM and getting more context on them. So today we are going uh, to talk about job matching specifically. And the schema we have uh, here is the one I'm showing. So the core, the core nodes here are profile and role. A role is a job. So the profile is a representation of a candidate. And we have the country of this candidate, all the skills he or she has, uh, the technical evaluations, if, if uh, this, this profile already got some interviews, and the recruitment journey. In this journey, every time we have a, a candidate being selected or participating in a process for a role, we have a recruitment journey. So the recruitment journey has some stages. It, it can, uh, uh, you know, it start at the beginning, it can have the interview, it can have the booking of the candidate and so on. And the role is also connected to a company. So moving forward, the first strategy I want to talk about is uh, using Chroma DB and to generate, to, to actually uh, store some questions and the, the proper uh, cipher to answer just these questions uh, and use this to generate other cipher queries. So the idea is like the following. We have the question like, which profiles fit the culture and are evaluated for Python, Java, and C++. And I also provide the, the cipher query that answer this type of question. So we have like, you know, some, some uh, groups of, of questions, like a uh, hundred of it or, or more. And it helps us to improve and to reduce the hallucination of the LLM when doing the, when using it. So RAG starts here. We have this, this uh, system prompt uh, preparing with some instructions what we are going to do. So in this case, I explicitly say that the task is to directly output a cipher statement to query the graph uh, database with some other instructions just to avoid you know, using uh, labels or fields that are not in the schema. So the schema is provided, it is dynamic, and also we have a vector search in Chroma, Chroma DB to get some, some questions and the respective uh, cipher command to answer them. So those two parts here, the schema and the retrieved statements, they are our reg stuff, our retrieval part of reg. And then we have the question. So uh, with that, we can have something like that. Which candidates are the most experienced in Java and React that aren't booked yet? And the, the system is able to answer even if it is, uh, you know, in using other uh, node types or other uh, fields that are not presented yet because of the examples. We, we provided. So moving forward here, we have the other strategy, which is embedding nodes uh, in Neo4j. So instead of using Chroma DB, DB to, to store the vector of embedding, the idea is to store them directly at the nodes in Neo4j. So here is one example of a, a textual representation of each node, like a role node, a profile node, and we, we use those representations to generate the embeddings and then put the embeddings in the respective nodes. And what we have is something like that. When I have a question or a sentence like, Brazilian profiles experienced in Java and Spring. Uh, I am not using LLM to get these uh, results. I am using only the vector search that Neo4j provides for us. So it's already able to get some uh, profiles that are related to this uh, sentence. Now I create another uh, prompt here, which is really straightforward. 
to say to the LLM that it is a recruitment expert and I have some context related to the profiles and roles. And then I just pass the question as a human. So here is what it brings for, for us. So I just put the same sentence and you know, uh, with the reg, it will be able to get some context and then uh, from this context, improve the answer. So this is what the, the LLM returns for us in this case. That is another example, seeking a job position for a really experienced Python developer. Uh, it, it has this uh, intelligence of even, even getting profiles and roles in this context, be able to, in this case, select only roles. So uh, this is the second strategy, how to combine them and why. Basically, we have some cases that the question uh, involves uh, a data that is not straightforward uh, related to, to the structure of the, of the graph itself. So a data that is more related to the field values uh, themselves. In those cases, we can get the representation of the nodes like skills, countries, things like that, and put in the, in the prompt before generating the Cypher query. And it can improve the generation of Cypher queries for sure. So the challenges for, for this approach um, is actually the latency. I mean, we use the LLM more than once for each question. So it may spend like one or two seconds to answer a question. And also we use vector search, which can be slow in some cases when having a large scale uh, data amount. Uh, about the future improvements, we can uh, refine these, these queries to have more performance and also explore hybrid embeddings, which are not only textual, but also looks on the, on the graph structure itself to generate the embedding uh, of the nodes. So it's, it was really fast just to introduce the, the, um, the topic. This QR code here is with my LinkedIn. If you want to add me, uh, I may have one minute for questions. So let me see if I have any question.